I just got to go to Facebook. I'm just going to quickly give us an intro here. Hello, welcome to Close Look. I'm Daniel West Bay. You got a special, special interviews here today. I know we've been cooped up getting interviews on the podcast or the TV shows has been difficult. But today, I know you see him on the screen. You don't see me. You're going to see Francis. Uh, that's Francis. Hi. I'm jo <laughs> and, and go ahead, Balraj. And by Baraj, who was here a couple of weeks ago, uh, talking about how important it is to uh, keep movement going. So they're here. What, what's up, guys? How you guys doing? I'm Not so bad, to be yeah. honest, considering what's happening outside. What What's happening outside? It's what's this little thing called COVID. <laughs> Pandemic. <laughs> First one of our generation. Well, you know, they felt, I'm sure, I'm sure our generation, not our generation, but the previous, like the newer generation felt left out. They wanted their own pandemic to talk about because we already have the Spanish yeah. flu. We have <laughs> SARS. We have our own, right? So. <laughs> what have you been up to besides playing Assassin's Creed? I, I love this. <laughs> the live is so funny. Um, if you have, I'm just going to quickly get it out of the way. If you have any questions or anything about uh, Balraj for Balraj. Can you remind the people what it is that you do? Sorry, oh, real quick. Oh, we work in acute private health care. Um, so if you have any needs for physiotherapy, counseling, psychology, uh, we can provide that through telehealth. Also, we are now offering registered nurses and physician appointments as well through telehealth. So uh, no cost to you. It gets billed right through MSP. Nice. And Francis, tell the folks who you are. You're the first hit. You're, you're new here. So go ahead. I'll tell well, everybody who I'm you are. Not really sure where to start. I'm, I'm a student. I'm a nursing student. So I'm not really employed anywhere. Um, I was employed by a particular company that had me going around um, the community trying to support um, individuals that had a, a queer brain injury. So actually, I used to work for Balraj. That's true. Uh, but now, yeah, I'm just a nursing student. That's pretty much it. I have nothing to do anymore because school is done. <laughs> so I'm curious, Francis, actually, has this, is school over because of what's happening or is school over because you're just done the semester? Uh, we, we ended our theory classes and our lab classes pretty much four weeks early. Uh, our clinical where we're actually going into the hospital having um real practice was about the same time it ended like four weeks ago so yeah a bit of both now it's it's, it's normal now since it's um thursday um yeah it's pretty much exam time but yeah we we did have to end our semester early because of covid19 uh, uh, so what have you guys been up to then there we go you guys look like you well right yeah, it looks so clean first I'm just gonna go take a marker and just hang on, guys. Just scrub it all over my face. <laughs> no one told you to shave. I don't know why you <laughs> shaved. <laughs> so, what have you guys been up to then? I I'm still working full time. I'm I'm currently work. I'm, I guess I took a break right now for uh, for this. But yeah, I'm still working full time <laughs> five days a week. Um, it's weird. I feel like I work from home quite a bit, anyways. So I feel like I haven't. I feel like life hasn't changed too, too much in, tr in like the traditional sense. Like I wake up, I work all day. By the time I'm done work, it's like 5 p.m. So like for me, it's not that big of a difference. But I know for a lot of people like Francis or I also have friends at other companies who've been laid off. Mm -hmm. They're like, man, like I wake up, sleep until like 11, like <laughs> you know, do a quick home workout or whatever, and then have a few drinks, play video games all day, go to bed. I'm like, Oh, that sounds kind of nice, but then also they're receiving like 50% of their pay on EI and I'm still getting full pay. So lose, lose, win, win. And Francis, what are you up to? Well, um, ever since the whole pandemic thing, the social distancing, I it actually put a like classes were done. It's all online, but first two weeks was kind of difficult because as the rest of the world is reacting, our instructors are also reacting. So they're just throwing things at us. So we're, we have things to do because they can't just say, hey, you guys, um, you passed your class. You don't have to do anything. So they're just throwing anything and everything they can. They're just reacting. And it actually added a lot of work. So there's a lot of work the first two weeks. But now it's, um, it's, it's kind of rough. 
I didn't fall asleep till 6 a.m. yesterday or two days ago. It's just my body is all messed up. I have nothing to do. I it's rough. Were you watching TikTok? Is that what you were doing? I don't even know what I was doing. It took me. What is TikTok? I still don't understand it. Like I, it's. It just seems like it's people dancing in front of music. Can't you just do that on anything? Well, the the sound clips are built into the app. Yeah. So you, you just have to record it and like mimic it. So it's a lot easier than you finding the song, bringing it in. And then well, I have Spotify. You can, like, I can, you can edit. Music. Well. You can edit. You can edit. Yeah. Right? You can edit and stuff like that. So. Still don't completely get it. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. It's not for everybody. And honestly, it's probably better. You're working full time still. So I think that it's better that you don't get involved with it. So, um, so have you a uh, quick question more for Balrash? Have yep. you seen an influx of people come to you guys or no, is it remained the same? It's remained the same. Like we do have other lines of business. So like 811 is the public health number right now that people are being told to like general public's being told to call if they have any concerns or they think they might have COVID or whatever. Um, so we've had some large employers reach out to us and say, Hey, like we have over 10,000 employees. We want to launch something similar to uh, 811, but for our organization only. So they're paying us like a set hourly fee for that. So we staff nurses and doctors, um, for that but in terms of like your general outpatient physio i feel like a lot of people aren't opting for it because they they don't really know how that's going to help them but a really good physio won't actually be that hands-on um, with you so telehealth is actually a really good way to at least have your concerns addressed so this is actually i mean you guys deal with the psychological too and yep. i have seen that some people who are extroverts by nature are just losing their minds. Oh yeah. So, what would be, uh, what would be the best advice that you could give them right now? Like, have you seen that kind of thing, and what kind of advice would you give them? Well, like, I'm not a counselor or a therapist, so like, Fair. I'm a psychologist. So I don't really want to cl- like try to offer professional advice. We'll but clump like, everybody in. Just but like <laughs> as as a clinician that that is is still seeing patients virtually, like. A lot of it is just like talking because they have so much pent up energy that they don't really know how to release it typically because they're not used to spending time at home. So they don't really know what avenues there are for releasing energy at home. Um, So we've been, you know, for, for people that are extroverts that are now being forced to be shut in and be introverts it's it's about educating them on different ways to stimulate their brain and try to find different activities that they can enjoy because it's not a short-term thing like this isn't gonna get through the next two weeks or four four weeks and you'll be back to normal life like this might be a quarter or half the year or three quarters of a year so you know you might as well invest the time into finding something that you enjoy that you can stimulate your brain and like let out that energy through whether that's doing housework or that's picking up a hobby um i know a lot of people are taking free online courses people are like going trail running and whatnot like things you just don't have time to do in your otherwise regular life people have a lot more time now um and then of course there, there are people that are lucky to still be employed from home so even though they may be extroverts they still have to focus on work and francis with that being said have you taken some online courses? Like, I know your teachers are still trying to like keep you guys busy, but like, is there anything else that you're doing outside of your studies to kind of make the time go by? Um, yes and no. I'm not sure this is the right answer. Is the kind of answer you're looking for? Um, <laughs> I'm honestly involving myself in a lot of like COVID. Like, that's even before we went, we started going down. I've been. I that's what that's what my a lot of my spare time is reading up on COVID and what's happening, usually locally. Um, it's just because, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting for me. And it is part of a routine for me anyway. So kind of like I just wanted to add on what Balraj said. I think, um, like for me, here's here. For me, I'm, I'm kind of an introvert. So, mm-hmm. right, like I like to go out. I like to socialize. But deep down, I would always consider myself an introvert. So if, 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 during a normal semester break, I can honestly, if it was fall, I can stay indoors. 
not do anything and it will not drive me crazy at all. I'm the same way. I, I, everybody, I've been getting calls from people saying, Oh man, I'm so lost. And I have never FaceTimed so much in my life. (laughs) I am not a FaceTime person. This is about the extent of how much I like people to see my face. Yeah. So (laughs) yeah, I, I get you. I can sit down because, you know, I edit videos and stuff like that. So sitting down at a desk is nothing new to me. So, so, okay. So what do you guys, what do you, are you guys, I see your Instagram posts all the time. You guys are always in a group chat, always meeting up with everybody. So does that keep you guys sane? A little bit. bit. A little bit. (laughs) You guys said the same time. (laughs) That's how in sync you are. I think it's important to create a new routine because like what I was saying earlier, um, it, in my opinion, it's not about being an introvert and an extrovert. Everybody is being affected because there's a change in our routine. It's just literally we have everybody's living a certain way, right? If they're living a certain way. Then all of a sudden it, it, it's, it felt like overnight you got to live this way instead. So that's what's affecting everybody. So I think it's not necessarily keeping yourself busy with new things like online classes. It's creating a new routine, whether whatever that may be. Right. Cause at first I was really losing it being indoors. Cause I didn't know what to do. Like I wasn't doing anything, but if I kind of tricked my own mind into saying, Hey, maybe I'll do this and I'll do that. And maybe this is something I'll do every few days. It's it makes things like, I don't know, give myself a purpose, I guess. Sounds silly, but well, even for people that work from home, like we advise them, like still get dressed for work. Even if it's only the top half, like still keep your routines. Don't just, you know, stay in sweatpants all day because like you, you feel how you dress, which sounds weird. So if you wake, if you literally roll out of bed two minutes before you start supposed to start work and you're, you know, you didn't brush your teeth, you're still in your sweatpants and your hoodie, like that's, that's the energy you're going to bring to your work as well. So like we advise people like, Hey, if you're still working from home, like still get up 30, 45 minutes before you start, like have a shower or brush your teeth or like have a cup of coffee and watch TV for 20 minutes, like do what you normally would do. And then that way you're going to be, your mind is still going to think that nothing's changing too much. Do you guys still do that? I see you guys are living by shower example. every day. Yes. I still shower every day. <laughs> I do dress up for meetings. Like if I have a, if I have like a business meeting, like I'll go put on a collared shirt and like present well, like I'm not going to pop up on a hoodie like this, but to, like today I'm not, I don't have any like web-based video calls for work. I'm just kind of working off my laptop. So I just chose to stay in my hoodie, but again, wow. I'm, I'm an introvert naturally anyway. So like for me, it doesn't affect me as much. Like I'm not used to waking up and putting on a suit and, cologne and gelling my hair and going to work so for me being like this is really no different fair so we're all introverts <laughs> I, I i i i haven't met an extrovert that i've interviewed yet so this is amazing <laughs> i used to be an extrovert did you uh, for, you know it's funny that i would never peg francis for an extrovert i've I known these two for a long time and i see francis like he's used to be a huge snapchatter I don't know if he still does, but I don't receive a lot of Francis' stuff, so. I don't, like, I've known Francis since, what, like, 2011, 10? Like, yeah. I don't remember you ever being an extrovert. Like, even when you... Really? An ex- really? Going to, like, the, what do you call them? The, the EDM things, right? Even then, like, I feel oh. like Francis kind of stuck with the person or people he was there with. Like, oh, fair. Was, okay. like going around, like, moshing with randoms. <laughs> so well, how okay I, I used to be like that but now it's just really? like yeah when i was younger keep in mind i'm, I'm a lot young, uh, older than you <laughs> like i still lived in my 20s before we got super close i didn't want to no? bring that up <laughs> <laughs> how old is everybody <laughs> hey uh Baj, i love this is this a mirror behind you it is a mirror behind me ah nice backdrop and Francis, I love your backdrop too. Dude, he's got a casting couch. How awesome is that? <laughs> you can't say that. Why? <laughs> We're promoting stay at home hub. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Google that if you're under 18. Yeah, Dustin Dustin makes a point of that every Sunday. Uh, <laughs> is Dustin the big stay at home hub user? Yes, yes, he is. <laughs> even prior to this whole thing. Even prior to this whole thing. 
Oh man. So, yeah. But <laughs> so, how did you guys meet then? Through Eagle Quest, I think, or someone at Eagle Quest. Well, I, oh, sorry. I thought by the way you made it sound, you just made it sound like it's an app, like Emo Quest. You found an <laughs> through Emo Quest. No, no, Eagle Quest is a golf course. Ah, uh, okay. No, no, this, this is this is it. So Baraj worked in Mohan at Eagle Quest. I got Mohan a job at Eagle Quest, but I wasn't working there at the time. Or when Balraj was there, I wasn't working. So we know each other through Mohan is my point. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> <It was. laughs> Mohan is our friend. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure they will get that. Mohan's a friend. Um, about, go ahead. How about you? How, what, how's your um, pandemic going? Your pandemic. <laughs> Well, it's not a pandemic in here. Uh, it's hard. I can't really, like, I try to uh, limit myself going outside because father is still a essential worker. I use that because, yeah, I don't know. That, I don't think that's a problem because he is an essential worker. So I try to limit my interactions outside. Uh, sometimes I go to the store, but that, it's so weird to go to the store, you know? Is everyone trying to dodge people? It, well, yes and no. Uh, but, like, everybody just looks like, have you guys ever played the game Division? Like, they all have, like, the masks and, like, the backpacks and jackets. Oh, yeah. They look like – it looks like a video game. We're living in a modern-day video game. Yeah, we really are. Is. Like, did you hear in the States? Like, they don't even want you to call the cops unless it's, in, like, a medical emergency. So, like, people are, like, looting everywhere. Like, there was a video the other day of a person just, like, recording two women stealing from her store because she <laughs> literally couldn't call the cops. <laughs> well – we're de like I don't want to say it's a, the extent of purge like the the movie purge, but it's it's weird like people just feel so distant right now you know, and like you I walk past them I like nod like like good day good day and they're just like mm. like like everybody next to them could be potentially gonna get them sick or gonna yeah. kill them, I mean it's fair but yeah yeah I for just, me I love it. A lot of people, I think, just feel like they don't want to do the wrong thing, right? Like for me, I don't want to, I don't want to grab for like that meat if somebody else is there because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable, and I can sense that they feel the same way, right? I'm walking and people are like, "Oh shoot, do I, do I stop walking?" You know, I that's how I interpret people's um, uh, body behavior. I guess I could be wrong. It's like, you know, the floor is lava. Only people are lava. So you're like, you're like a, you know, yeah. a football player. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys gone to a park? I, like, have you guys actually gone outside, like somewhere to a park or driven? I take, like I take the dogs to the off-leash dog park. That's about it. Yeah. Do you see a lot of people at the dog park? Uh, not too many. The most I've ever seen at one time were probably like five other owners, but like everyone was just keeping their distance. Yeah. It's so good that the pets can't get them. Otherwise, we'd all be screwed. <laughs> pets might be able to get them now, actually. Apparently. I, I, I haven't just read cats. Because if it's just cats, headline. I'm perfectly okay with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know anything. I just saw a headline. I didn't read the article, so I have no idea. So I'm going to get a little bit, uh, cons not conspiracy, but like a little, pol little political here. So how do you think the States is handling it? <laughs> you think they're handling it the right way? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. I like that short answer. Not at all. No, nothing. Oh. No. Like there, what more is there uh, to say? <laughs> well, they're getting, they're getting money, right? So what do you mean? They're, I, 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 I hear that they're getting like a thousand dollars. Twelve hundred. Oh, that. okay. And but so, I mean, like, there's only so much you can do when your president denied this thing even existed up until like four weeks ago. <laughs> That's the best. The guy is just—he's—he's he's an idiot. He—he he really is. <laughs> but, it, um, um, I call yeah. him the orange Cheeto. The orange Cheeto. <laughs> Francis, I know you're looking at something on your screen. I can see the reflection off your glasses. <laughs> no, I'm not. Hey, you are. What do you mean? I love it. I, I know I'm looking sideways because the TV, I have it on the big screen. I see all your big heads on there. Big head. <laughs> so, 
Where did you think of uh, Where did you think of WrestleMania? I see. <laughs> also, will Will there be access to uh, day two anytime soon that you know? Oh, of? actually, you know what? I I I was an idiot. I should have recorded. We canceled Wrestle. Like we canceled the WWE Network. That was the uh, That was the final draw. That was. Oh, you did. I did. I, I, right now, there is not enough content on the WWE Network for me to keep keep it going right i mean so and wrestlemania was just it was uh, it was terrible but i do wish that every match was like a mini movie so that was cool that was very cool you see it francis no (laughs) thank you francis no i i I didn't see it i tried what didn't i put it in the cloud you did. Yeah, no, I still haven't downloaded it. That's why. Oh my god. Well, that's I'm busy. That's on you. Busy with what? You were just saying you have nothing to do. <laughs> COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out what's happening to the rest of the world, what's happening around us, what I can do. I got so. Offered- <laughs> uh, so I, I don't mean to like go. I don't know if you guys don't want to talk about it too uh, political or whatever. But uh, I was discussing this with friends at some, uh, maybe last week or a week before that. And I was like, isn't it kind of convenient that this virus kind of happened when there was uprisings happening everywhere? Like Hong Kong had an uprising. Chile was having an uprising. UK is having an uprising. All these places are starting to like fight against the, the powers that be, right? It's saying that enough is enough. Uh, and then this virus happened. I mean, this could be just me, and I'm okay with that. And again, I got to express this, that the views here are mine. Of, the Close Look just gives me the platform to talk about this on. It does not reflect Close Look's views. But mine is that it just feels like it's a way to fear monger now, m- more political moves and fear mongering now than it is uh, a pandemic. I mean, it's more of a pandemic against humans. It's like we needed to control these group of people that are – speaking too much so in order to do that you got to split them up have anxiety depression people fall apart and stuff like that do you guys feel like it's a little just just a little odd i'm just well, curious i'm not trying to put you guys in i know you guys have I was actually yeah. talking about this the other night about 9 11 about how it just happened to be so convenient that mm-hmm. like the effects of 9 11 allowed for bush to get everything he ever wanted done in a much more expedited way was zero pushback or backlash Mm -hmm. so so but it's like one of those like with covid it's one of those things where like you will never actually know like was it just a coincidence that some random idiot ate a bat or like was this purposely released out of a test tube like into this food market like with the hope that someone would get this and start passing it on like yeah, because when you start to really kind of look at it, it's like Trump doesn't like China, right? He doesn't want anything to really be coming from there. Oh, th- that's nice. Just like show that up in the middle of the screen. That's nice. Love it. Okay. Yeah, great. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we all stopped. We're like, what? <laughs> We're using Zoom. Um, that like, Trump doesn't like China, so it's like. It, it's because there are there are some reports that an American actually left like a virus like they they were helping and they're the ones that produced it there and mm-hmm. that the guy that did see it happening he died shortly after that anyways and it's because they didn't want him he tried to to tell everybody but it well, didn't the thing, happen. Right? The thing with COVID nineteen is like the coronavirus strain has been researched for so long right mm-hmm. like like even Francis if you go back and look at series. Um, like vaccination records, like dogs get a Corona shot. Um, Oh, really? Yeah. There's so many different strains of it. So like they, like, I do believe that the story about that they were um, researching this particular strain and that it was like a vial of it was stolen and taken back to China. Like, I do think that part's real, but like, like did the gut, like, the conspiracy of like did the government actually hire this guy or was this a scientist that just wanted to bring it back so he could research it on his own and now this mistake happened fair yeah like because like 
isn't it true that the doctor that first discovered it was an ophthalmologist? So like, why would an eye doctor be looking at viruses anyways? Fair. Well, I don't, I, yeah, yeah that's a good that. question. That's a good question. Huh? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I, it, it's just, it, yeah, we should, honestly, by this point in time, we should have a cure at some degree. I mean, anything. I mean, I know. Well, vaccines from, take a long time, right? Well, but there's several reports where Cuba, like the Q, uh, medical staff from Cuba have been working with China and they've been come, they come so closed where it may not like flatten the curve entirely, but it gives people the building blocks to resist the virus. Mm -hmm. And it's not coming here. And as far as I know, we're not working with them because uh, the United States President Trump wants everything to be done in house because this, and this is where I would meant like, it's now become, maybe it was a pandemic and it got out of hand, but now it's become a political and, and fear mongering. It's, it's no longer trying to solve anything. It's just, it's just because we can, and it'll be good for a vote. Like if Trump manages to all of a sudden have a cure and he does it, that helps him and secures him for the next election. Right. I, so. I, I agree with you. I think, um, it happens all the time. I'm pretty sure. I'm assuming that people will exploit whatever's happening in world events to further their political agenda. That I won't, I won't deny that. But as far as how it actually started, I don't know. At the end of the day, we, no one will ever know, right? No, we'll, we'll know like 50 years down the line <laughs> or something. Like that. It sucks that Canada relies so heavily on FDA approval. Yeah. Which I think is why we won't work with overseas manufacturers because like, yeah, I think, I think Europe will have and Asia will have a vaccine ready a lot sooner than the U S but we're regulating our country through FDA. So it's like until the FDA approves it, we won't get access to it. Mm. It's crazy. It's annoying. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, so what are you guys doing? We're going to move a little bit off of it. It's getting, getting grim. Uh, what are you guys doing to keep positive? Like, what is your mindset? I know you said you tell people to like get up and stick to normal routines, but it can become hard, especially when the weather's kind of wishy-washy. I mean, it's been really nice for the past few days, but how do you stay positive? Like what, what do you guys do well, to stay like, positive? A, a, a saying I like is like something you can repeat to yourself whenever you're feeling stressed throughout the day is, I will not stress about anything I can't control. So it's like, what can I do? It's just regrounding yourself. Like, what can I do to control? Like, what's in my control? I can choose to stay away from people. I can choose to go out for a walk and maintain distance from people. Like, I can choose to cook a nice dinner. Like, like only focus on what you can control. Because if you start, if you start spiraling and thinking about, well, this could happen and that could happen, and like before you know it, you're now like planning your funeral. And like a really weird fact is like online obituary websites have seen such an uptick in traffic, Whoa. which is like kind of sad and also really, really strange that like people, instead of choosing to just control what's in their control and keep themselves safe, they would rather just go write their own obituary because they're like, well, I'm going to go do things that are going to risk me getting this thing and dying. People are actually doing that? Oh, yeah. That's, That's not sad. How do you know that? That's <clears throat> terrible. That's terrible. There's so much to still live for, even if this thing happens and it does. And that's the and thing. It, like every day they report how many new cases there are, but like they don't, they don't put in the headline how many recoveries there are. Mm -hmm. and then I you, heard and you there read was, the recovery. It's like, oh, BC, like I'm just making up fake numbers here, but it'll be like BC had 40 new cases and we're up to 1,200 now. But then you got to go to the bottom of the article and be yeah. like, 600 of those 1200 are considered fully recovered now. Yeah. yeah. I think in Italy, like, or China, the recovery rate right now is they were up in like 700s or something like that. I, again, it's, but you're right. They don't, they don't talk about all that stuff. Again, leading to my point about the fear mongering, but Brent, uh, yeah. So, so, but that's this how you keep, think... go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, no, you, you go ahead. You go this is what I mean. This is why I, I like to know what's happening. Like, I like, okay. Some people say, and it's true. If don't look at the media, 
don't read news articles, don't talk about it if it's going to give you anxiety. I definitely agree with that. If it's giving, if it's a source of anxiety, stay away from it. But for me, I, I do it the opposite way where I like reading up on it. I like knowing what's, what the facts are because if, for example, this is an example I used um, the other day. If somebody messaged me and be like, oh my God, things are ending or the world's over, people are dying. I can be like, no, actually this is what's happening. So it's not too bad. You know, like I like using facts and data in regards to COVID. So yeah, that's why, a good way to stay that's how I stay positive. Yeah, it's a good way to stay rational as well. Yeah. Sorry, that's perfectly, that's, that's exactly what I'm thinking about. But sometimes people could go down the rabbit hole, right? I mean, like Brawl Rush, there's a lot of good stuff happening. But sometimes if, I mean, the thing could be said about Instagram and Facebook, like exercising and posts and all that stuff. Like it's not true unless you put it on Instagram or Facebook, right? You, you haven't done that. So if the media doesn't say, oh, there's this many cases that have people where people have recovered and come out as, um, then people are kind of like, oh, it's not true. It's just a report. Even, even though you have somewhat of the proof there, right? Yeah. So uh it's weird but like like there's so many different ways to cope with it but i think like social media is one of the biggest problems mm -hmm. because there's so many people that only read headlines or go based off of like viral memes or whatever like it's like no no word of a lie there was a meme going around that covid stands for chinese origin viral infectious disease and like so many people were sharing it and like believing it that's like see but yeah that's exactly stupid. that's madness yeah i feel bad for the A asian population right now because it doesn't matter if they were born here or born there or came here they're looked at as the enemy right now and i feel bad because that's not the case and it shouldn't be the case for anything really we're uh, we're all in this together and i think that if we the thing is if we come together and work at it together then we have a better chance of overcoming this and flattening whatever curve or coming up with a cure or whatever it may be than if we remain divided you know because people say we like people saying specific things to keep us that way so yeah at the end of the day it's like just listen to the cdc and the health government like don't don't get your facts from, I don't know. You want to say it, Fox News. You want to <laughs> say Fox News. But even like even American media, like I wouldn't listen to it because they're so, it's become like blue versus red. Like the, 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 the stations that, back, the stations that back the Democrats are, it's very obvious that they have an anti-Republican agenda and then vice versa. So even like their coverage of COVID, like, if you watch like a, a Republican news network, like their coverage of COVID is centered around how good Trump is doing. And then the coverage on the Democrat side is about how bad Trump is doing. And like that, that becomes their main point instead of actually informing the public of what to do and what's going on. Yeah. Which is why like CDC is the best. It's not subjective, right? Yeah. It's just objective data. Um, yeah, it's terrible. I don't know what else to input on that. <laughs> oh. there, there's like not much besides yeah. like just keep yourself safe and like just, only I, know what you can control. I think you had it in like for the most part, like stay informed. Like just, you know, take everything with a grain of salt, deduce things on your own. Uh, yeah, and don't shut yourself out of new knowledge, I think is, is pretty key too. Um, so have you guys, I know I'm going to switch a little bit again, the gears, we're probably going to come back to COVID again, but, um, <laughs> uh, there's been tons of movies delayed. Uh, Mulan was delayed. I think Black Widow's getting pushed back. Yeah. Um, Matrix 4 stopped, um, production. Of what COVID. is it? Say it again. Matrix 4. Matrix. How do you think that this will affect the movie industry? Well, it's probably a good thing that they are pushing all these movies because otherwise there'd be nothing released next year because nothing's filming right now. 
it's yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that way. Yeah, it's a good point. Couldn't couldn't they just test everybody and then continue on with the filming and they just could, keep them have... on the set, quarantine them on the set? The, oh, your... I see what you say. That's the I thing. Can... That we don't have mass testing. Like, like, <laughs> like someone proposed the idea for like the NBA is like they all play their games in Miami and like every team just stays on its own cruise ship so that like no one get goes off the cruise ship except to go play basketball. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. I, I mean, that, that'd be really weird, but that'd be hilarious. And yeah. here they come off the cruise ship, the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> I'm, I'm so pumped. Next Saturday, there's a UFC. Like, it's going to get so many viewers. Like, it's just so nice to watch live sports again. And apparently, they're, they've secured an island, and they're going to have all their fighters, like, quarantine on this island and have fights every week. And it's not going to look like the WWE style? Where... It will. Well, well, the with, but the thing with the UFC is like, I'm, I'm sorry to your wrestling fans, because it's real, like, you don't need the crowd's reaction. That's like, it. Really? Nope. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm out. That's <laughs> so like, like, even if you want, even if you watch a UFC, like event, like even though it's a still like a sold out stadium in Vegas, like the camera is always focused just on the ring anyways. And the, yeah. the, the crowd actually gets blacked out. So you don't see them anyways. That's fair. Good point. Good point. So you're saying you have higher hopes to that show than than one of the biggest WrestleMania, like one of the biggest years in wrestling. Yeah, because like I love betting, and like ah, okay, I I can't bet on WWE because like it's already determined, and like unfortunately betting sites, like they have an in with whoever the writers are because like. If you look at WWE odds, there's always one guy that's like heavily, heavily, heavily favored. Like you could bet a million dollars and win ten dollars because they know what the outcome's gonna be. So the so one, it's not real betting, and two, you kind of spoil the event for yourself because you know who's favored to win. Right. Whereas like with UFC, it's like I just I just want that thrill of gambling. I'm I'm a I'm a degenerate addict. <laughs> At least you're honest with yourself. Like I only bet, I bet very small. Like I've never bet more than fifty dollars on a fight. But even when you have, like mm. five bucks on a fight, like it just gets your adrenaline going. Uh, yes, and that's why I we, we went to a casino for yeah Manuel's batch right something or one of those oh, no. I don't know yes it was during Manny's yeah, it was. yeah and I don't like gambling because exactly that point I don't like it because then I got I want to win I want to win and I think that's why I don't gamble. I hate, I don't want to. See, for me, like, of course, winning's nice. But for me, it's just that, like, it's that thrill of, like, I have no control over this. And I could either win here or lose here. But, like, something I, not, I otherwise wouldn't care about. Like, I care about it so much. Like, I am this, I'm this fighter's biggest fan that he's ever had. Because I have five bucks on the line. Whereas otherwise, I'd be, like... I'd be on my phone during the fight. Like, I don't really care what happens. Like, okay. Kind of like what Francis is doing right now. Jeez, Francis, we see you. <laughs> <laughs> this is important. Nothing's important right now. Yeah. Sorry. I think, you know, there's been some articles saying that no, we shouldn't be doing anything. Like, we shouldn't be putting any stress on our minds uh, because this could, it, it could fall apart and we don't need to have there's some saying that we don't need structure. So Francis, stop having structure for two seconds. <laughs> Stress free right now. <laughs> how is it? How does it feel? Now I know bars. You're still working. However, this kind of how does it feel to to you're working but not really be working or expected to be somewhere at a certain time? It's kind of nice. Is like I said, like for, for, for me, nothing's changed because I work from home regularly so much too. Oh, okay. But like it is, it is weird. Like it does feel like we're all on like vacation together. <laughs> like, like, like it just kind of feels like this whole self distance, social distance and quarantine thing is like a vacation. Like, like what do you want to do for dinner tonight? Like, let's just have blizzards because we're on vacation. Like it, it, it feels weird. But it's also kind of cool that we're all going through the same thing together. Yeah. Do you think that camp, like, say this does, theoretically, say it goes longer, right? Do you think campsites 
will be able to take on people mm. because you know they could if it, you know aside from the pool they could stagger people out you know they could but it would probably be at a way reduced capacity they could jack the prices be, up it wouldn't be worth it because most people that go to those camps is for the socialization yeah is it not yep fair I Fair. guess it depends on the people, right? It depends. I'm sure not all of them would feel like there's a decrease in enjoyment just because there's less people, right? Fair. Yeah. Fair. You know, now every time I see Francis, I think the casting couch. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> He's even in a white t-shirt. Like, it's just bare bones. I'll change it. So, no. Francis, I heard, <laughs> you, uh, I heard you want to become an actor. <laughs> there you go. I love that even more. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Well, guys, I don't know how much uh, longer. I don't know even know how long this has been, to be honest. I have no... 40 minutes. Oh, 42. Wow. 42 minutes. So um, anything, Paul Raj, anything you want to tell the folks at home before we sh wrap it up? And... I would say definitely take advantage of our telehealth services because like, you can still use your extended benefits mm -hmm. um, or if you have an ICBC claim or whatever, like, like those are all still viable options so that you're not paying out of pocket or you are getting reimbursed. But yes, it's, it's really good to just like sometimes talk to someone. It is like Francis, Francis, give everybody your number so they can call you. <laughs> no. I'm joking. <laughs> What are you up to? Okay, so what are you doing for the rest of the day, Francis? Me, I'm actually um in the couch to work. <laughs> actually, uh, I have some pickups to do today. Or with the maybe, couch? No, no, no. Like... I, um, there's um there's a group of people who are you know making face shields and stuff like that. Oh. Um, they have three D printers. I'm kind of like I volunteer to be a courier, so I have to do some pickups today. And tomorrow I'm going to do more pickups and some deliveries. That's literally why I was texting just like 10 minutes ago. That's why I said it was important. You're getting any deliveries to South Surrey? Um, I'm going to be ended up, I'm going to be in White Rock or Crescent Beach tomorrow for sure. Can you bring me food? What do you want? <laughs> I'll text you. Okay. I love this. This is so <laughs> Do you want food, Daniel? No, you're, don't come to New West. I'm, okay. I'm looking for things to do. This. I'm a skip driver. Oh no, I don't want to yeah, work. Dude. There, right now, I think if any industry that's booming, I think it's the restaurant industry. To be honest, it's crazy. Uh, uh, not not the restaurant industry, the delivery drivers. Yeah, yeah the fast food restaurants, the things that make food real fast and deliver it. I don't want to work though. <laughs> Jesus, it would feel like work. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, thank you, guys. This has been fun. I wish I could talk to you all day because this is actually kind of nice. You can. You know my phone number. Well, I know. But I, only, I, I only do that. Francis, I have to say thank you for, uh, you know, it's funny, and I'm going to get a little, little personal here, but I've been doing this um, challenge on a workshop that I've been doing with a group of people where it's in a private group mostly, but Francis did see probably some of it on, on whatever. But, um, Huh? It's like go live every day of April and it's a set set pieces of challenge. Like you got to, I think was first day was like, tell a bit about yourself. And I think today I still have to do today where it's like, be raw, do something that you're not comfortable with in front of camera live. And, and so Francis has been actually, you know what, dude, you've been very supportive and I didn't expect that from, from you because you know, I, I don't, I, I just don't. So I really do appreciate all the support. I don't mean that. I know how that sounds, but that's not, what I, that's not how I meant it. I know, I know. It's, it was, been really, uh, it's been really nice. It's been really cool, man. It was, it was odd because, like, I know it was public. And while I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is not the usual video game stream. It's, like, really personal. I'm like... Yeah, he texted he us. He was like, guys, is Daniel okay? <laughs> I didn't know... I didn't say that. I'm like, Daniel's getting real. And I'm just like, shit, do, do I log? Should I log out? Should it like, it's in public. 
I don't, I don't know if he wants me to see this. So I battled for a few minutes trying to decide if I should continue because I wanted to. But I was like, does he know I'm one of the people who will be watching this? Because you did open up. You I did. did. Open up. I, uh, uh, well, I've been speaking to a couple of people. I've been on, actually, I was on recently a podcast for, for uh, that one got, that one got real deep. I've been trying to, trying to open up to people. They say it's good to be transparent on video with people. So I've been trying, trying. But it's hard. It's hard. You know, it's funny because a, a lot of people, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel like there's a set, certain set image about myself, even to you guys, that I don't like sometimes want to break the barrier of. Like Volcano? Yeah, well, <laughs> yes. Everyone's <laughs> like that. You know, but yeah, sometimes I feel like people think that I'm a killjoy, and that's why I don't get invited to a lot of places. Not you guys, but I'm saying like a lot of other We always invite like, you. Manny doesn't invite you. <laughs> yeah, I always like what about cousin nephew Daniel? Literally every event, we're like invite Daniel. He's like, mm. uh, wow. No, Manny usually does. Just throw him all under the right bus. No, no he's Manny. He's he's <laughs> joking. Manny's usually like, oh yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that is it. Okay, Baraj, do you want to? So they can find you at the same website. Do you want to just yeah. say that one more time? So www.btrbc.ca or email us um, at btrbc at bayshore.ca. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut up this video so it's a lot more easier to, so you don't see the beginning and ending. I'll put that in the description below, his, all that stuff. Um, Francis, anything you want to say? What's your Snapchat? Yeah, do you have a plug? Where can they find uh, your casting couch? You can find my Instagram, <laughs> but not my Snapchat. Uh, nothing really, um, reflect. Reflecting is really important, especially during this pandemic, you know, figure out why you're feeling the way you're feeling, what you can do about it. I do a lot of uh, reflecting. People probably do a lot of meditating. I don't do, I don't meditate. It's mostly reflecting, but that's the only thing I can leave, um, leave your audience behind, I guess. Reflect. What would you describe your what would you describe a uh, close look demographic as? Um definitely I think more well since the podcast for us have come on it's been definitely more um demog like between the ages of 18 to like 24 but it's still ranging from like mid 40s or 40s to like 70s so still the older the thing is we're still trying to work our, our way out because i don't like i mean to sound not to sound a little weird like rude or anything but a lot of it's south asian community still so seeing like two white guys on a podcast is still a little you're not you know, we're still trying to work on some barriers but we're slowly getting there you're latin so. your brown skin what sorry i'm like listening to so many damn audios at the same time <laughs> so that's i said i said you're not white you're latin you're brown skinned well people will still i mean come on look at me i'm white like this camera I'm, I'm trying to get this light here to hit me so that like it doesn't like so i look whiter but it's not doing a very good job so yeah but with your guys's help i'm hoping to get younger people see there's my light right there nice nice uh with your guys' help, I'm hoping to get like younger demographic and whatnot, trying to change things, shake things up. But yeah. Cool. Anyways, yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you being on. No worries. Bye. Wow. Thank you for that energetic. Thanks, Daniel, for having us on. <laughs> I said that's what I said. You're like, okay, thanks. Okay. I gotta go. I actually gotta go put on sweats now. That's, that's, oh God. Thanks, you don't want to see uh, the waist down is hey. just it's underwear it's oh, not God. okay that's enough <laughs> okay Bye. see you guys Bye. have a good day Bye.